John 6, 48 to 58, I am that bread of life. Your fathers did eat manna in the wilderness and are dead. This is the bread which cometh down from heaven that a man may eat thereof and not die. I am the living bread which came down from heaven. If any man eat of this bread, he shall live forever. And the bread that I will give is my flesh, which I will give for the life of the world. The Jews therefore strove among themselves, saying, How can this man give us his flesh to eat? Then Jesus said unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Except you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you have no life in you. Whoso eateth my flesh and drinketh my blood has eternal life. And I will raise him up at the last day. For my flesh is meat indeed, and my blood is drink indeed. He that eateth my flesh and drinketh my blood dwelleth in me, and I in him. As the living Father has sent me, and I live by the Father, so he that eateth me, even he shall live by me. That is, his life is suspended, and my life takes over. This is that bread which came from heaven. Not as your fathers did eat manna and are dead. He that eateth this bread shall live forever. Shout the loudest, say amen. amen. You believe life is coming your way tonight. Shout the loudest, amen. amen. Just before I go on quickly, we had the acting ambassador of the Sierra Leonean um, High Commissioner Embassy in Nigeria in the healing and deliverance service. They had earlier on, they, 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 their people earlier on sent us a letter to pray for the Ebola virus epidemic that is ravaging their country, especially Eastern Sierra Leone, bordering with Liberia and then the Guinea. And they asked us to pray. Their, their president declared a public holiday for people to stay at home, reflect, pray, and to know what to do. So yesterday we spread that letter on the altar here. I'm sure some of you were aware. And we prayed at the end of the service, they came, about three of them from their embassy, that they were around sitting in the overflow. But this is what he said to me. He said, Pastor, we are so grateful for the help Nigeria is always giving to us in Sierra Leone. And again, the, this prayer help is coming. He said, but I want to let you know that so far, over 150 people, maybe close to 160, had been infected of Ebola and survived it. He said, he said, we have over 154, 55 survivors so far. That is, they contracted the disease and came out of it. He said, so pastor, it is a winnable battle. I thought somebody would be excited to know that there is no battle on earth that is not a winnable battle. We have not heard yet that they prayed or fasted or did anything like that. And yet, they walked out of that demon. Therefore, I am here to announce to you in this assembly, announce to this nation, announce to everyone connected, associated, related, that your battle is a winnable battle. Nigeria's battle is a winnable battle. Terrorism battle is a winnable battle. The battle of Ebola virus is a winnable battle. Shout the loudest, amen. Help me walk to seven people, tell them it's a winnable battle. It's a winnable battle. There is no unwinnable battle on, under, the, under heaven. It's a winnable battle. It's a winnable battle. It's a winnable battle. Give Jesus the shout of praise. It's a winnable battle. Take your seat in the presence of the Lord. That, I want to start on that note. That there is no battle on it that is not winnable. It doesn't matter what you are facing now. One day you will look back 
and wonder how you crossed it. You will look back and realize that you actually survived it. The thing came against you, you confronted it and conquered it. Beyond your current battle, there is a life ahead. There is a victory ahead. There is a breakthrough ahead. Shout the loudest, amen. Whether it's the conspiracy of men or the conspiracy of demons or the conspiracy of witches and wizards or the conspiracy of ancestral curses, it is a winnable battle. Take your seat in the presence of the Lord. We just read something very, very serious now. I want to say that the wisdom of God is always captured or encapsulated in mysteries. And I will explain that shortly in the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 2 verse 7. Paul the apostle said, but we speak the wisdom of God in a mystery. Even the hidden wisdom which God ordained before the world unto our glory. The wisdom of God or the solutions of God or the strategies of God or the answers of God are always encapsulated in mysteries. There are many things in scripture we do not know. If we knew, we would have walked out of situations long ago. The wisdom of God is encapsulated in mysteries. And here, take note of these two key thoughts. When you have access to mysteries, then you gain mastery. In every realm of life, access to mystery equals mastery. When you see a man or a woman who appears to be a master in several realms, he or she got access to mysteries. Also, note that when you get access to mysteries, you eliminate misery. Mysteries handle miseries. You cannot connect with the mysterious wisdom of God and continue to live a miserable life. Mysteries. Equal masteries and mysteries delete miseries. One of those mysteries tonight is the Holy Communion. It's the communion table. The Holy Communion, we took it religiously for years. For many of us with the background of the Orthodox or mainline churches, we took it for years so religiously until we could not perceive that it carries any reality. But tonight, the communion is a, is a wisdom, a solution, an answer, uh, a divine help packaged inside mysteries. And tonight as I speak about it, is going to push someone into the realm of masteries and is going to delete the misery of the life of somebody. If you are the one, say a loud amen. amen. Question is, what does the communion have to offer? What is in the communion? When Jesus took it, the, we, we, we encounter that in Matthew chapter 26, verse 26 to 28. It says, but as they were eating, Jesus took bread and blessed it and broke it and gave it to the disciples and said, take it, this is my body. And he took the cup and gave thanks and gave it to them and saying, drink it, all of it. For this is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for many for the remission of sins. Now, what is in the communion? First, the communion carries the very life of the master. The life. Because he said, this is my body. And then, this is my blood. 
So whatever is in his body is in the, is in the communion. Whatever is inside his blood is inside the communion. What is inside his blood? His life. Leviticus chapter 17 verse 11. He said, the life of the flesh is in the blood. What is inside his body? What is inside his blood? It is his very life. Every encounter with the communion, therefore, if it is encountered with revelation, encountered with by understanding, is an encounter with the life of God. What is, the, what is in his life? Indestructibility. I want you to understand this because everything you see in the world with the devil is a shadow of the reality. Somebody will now ask his, somebody's mother or father will now ask him, I hear that there is so much uh, charm or people are dying anyhow. Come, let's give you something. Am I communicating? And they will do some concussions and mix it and give him to eat. And inside that concussion, that he has eaten. They said he has gone home. They have cooked him very well. In fact, they gave him something to eat. Bullet, no, they pass his body. I'm sure you have seen some of those, some, some occultic people and those kind of people, and arm robbers and so on. Said they cook him very, he gave him something to eat. Cut his body. Now hear me. If a devil and his agent can so prepare a concussion to make a man impenetrable, does it become difficult to understand that Jehovah can have a superior preparation a preparation that no witch can resist that no wizard can temper with is God speaking to somebody here carrying the indestructible life of the indestructible savior. The Pharisees could not kill him. The Sadducees could not kill him. Pharaoh, Herod could not kill him. Pontius Pilate said, don't you know that, can't you tell me, don't you know that I can deal with you? And he says, shut up. You have no power over me except it be given to you. Say, I can summon 12 legion angels now. If it, if it comes to that. But I'm, I'm just trying to lay down my life. I'll pick it up very soon. It was not the nails that killed him. It was not the thorns that killed him. It was a voluntary surrender for assignment. That was why he said in John chapter 10 verse 17 to 18. John 10, 17 to 18 said, Therefore doth my father love me because I lay down my life that I might take it again. No Ebola virus take at it from me. Ay, 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 ay. No ritual killer take at it from me. No hired assassin take at it from me. No stray bullet take at it from me. No bomb take at it from me. I lay it down of myself and I have power to lay it down and I have power to take it again. That same life is what you took when you drank the communion blood. That amen is too paralyzed. That amen is too paralyzed. That very life that he said no man take it. The Bible said when you, he said inside the blood is the life. So when you take that life, you are connected to a life that no devil is licensed to take. Not to talk of an infinitesimal virus. Not to talk of somebody shook hands with you and your hand got paralyzed. Not to talk of somebody took your name to a native doctor and then they say he has headache and died. That devil is a bastard. 
by the power of this communion tonight, I prophesy to everyone in this assembly and everyone connected, related, associated with this commission. No liver disease taketh your life. No hepatitis virus taketh your life. No Ebola virus take care of your life. No terrorist take care of your life. No ritual killer take care of your life. No hired killer take care of your life. Because you are connected to the same life. The same life that the master had. That nobody could take. He said, as you take my body and you take my blood, you are connected to that very life. Somebody say amen. amen. Somebody say amen. amen. Somebody say amen. amen. Help me walk to seven people. Tell them no man or devil take my life. No man or devil. If you are shouting, let that shout be louder. If you are shouting, let that shout be louder. If you are shouting, let that shout be louder. Lift your right and say, I am connected to the very life of the master. As I take the communion, as I take the body and the blood of Jesus, I am taking his very life, indestructible life. If the priest, the servant of God, anointed of God, blesses that communion, it is transformed. There is an invisible release that can only be measured super, 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 spiritually. If a very dirty herbalist has not brushed his mouth for how many days, stinking, only inter interacting with demons, can prepare a portion for somebody and it carries power. How much more a holy ghosted, anointed, fireized, with the mantle of God on his life, make declarations on the bread and on the wine, and it carries the same life of the master to deliver you from destruction. I like what I am saying to step into your spirit. And once you can catch it, the matter is over. So travel from here to somewhere, he didn't return back. That devil is a bastard. You are not permitted to be swallowed on the highway. Whether by road traffic accident or by anything, you are not permitted to be swallowed on the highway. You take your journey to where you are going. You start, you will reach, and you reach, and you return. I don't have the time tonight to tell you how many times they tried to destroy him and they could not destroy him. Take your seat in the presence of the Lord. What is inside the communion? Secondly, it carries. I have four things to say, but I'll, 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 I'll say two per service. Secondly, it contains the tireless energy of the master. Can you picture Jesus? For 72 hours, he was on his feet preaching. And after three days, he was not hungry yet. After how many days? He did, he, there was no record that he interrupted the preaching to go and eat. And what did he say? Give them food to eat. For they have been with me for three days. I'm not bothered about myself. I can keep them for seven days if I want. But their concern is, their own is my concern. If they go on the road, they may faint on the way. Faint on the way. Give them to eat. And when they broke the, they brought bread, they have been with me now three days and nothing to eat. How can you be preaching three days? They didn't tell us that you drank water or you ate food and you are ministering. Healing the sick, morning till night, night vigil till morning, morning till night, night till morning for three days. 
And when he multiplied the food, there was no record that he tasted it. And the people ate and were on their way home. And he continued business as usual. It is an indefatigable energy. He said, and it is inside his flesh. You don't understand. I wish that you understood. It is inside his flesh. Inside his blood. Call it energy. Staminovite. You know staminovite that gives stamina. Energy that supplies energy. You cannot be lying down for waist pain. You, you are not permitted to be a victim of weariness, tiredness, and no devil is permitted to make you feeble. Whether it's a bacteria or a virus or a parasite, whatever it is, it is inside the communion. What you are taking in the communion is liquid life and also liquid energy. Everyone who came in here tonight with any trace of weakness in the day, weakness in the night, weakness of a part of your body, weakness of any department of your life, by the power of the communion tonight, that weakness must die. That amen can be louder. That amen can be louder. That amen can be louder. Lift your right hand and say in the name of Jesus. Ay, 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 ay. In the name of Jesus. I receive. The life. Of the master. I receive. The life. Of the master. I receive. The energy. Of the master. Now. Some people wonder why somebody will fly all the way from the UK and arrive on Sunday morning, 5 a.m., go and shower, no sleep, and step in straight and continue preaching in five services on fire as if he slept from night till morning. It is energy, staminovite. One day I even did worse than that. I came from Europe, from Newcastle. I flew down to, because I wanted to be in church on Sunday morning. Finished five services and flew right out on Sunday evening to South America. That is like 14 hours flight. By the time you reach Germany after six hours, you are, you are taking off another 10 hours. And I arrive there, continue preaching for another five, six, how many, how many days? And then return back to continue service on Sunday without no waste pain. Those of you who are in the soldier, is it even easy to stand like that? <laughs> Some soldiers drop on, on, on parade. Just stand for a while and the man drop like stick. <laughs> are you hearing what I'm saying here today? What I am telling you is real. It's real. And the reality of it is coming upon you today. The communion we are taking tonight and the one in your hands is going to fire something in your system. That will set the devil on the run forever. You believe? Say it loud, amen. Look at somebody. Tell them, get ready for energy. And staminovite. Get ready. For a higher level. Of energy. Give the Lord a shout of praise. A shout of praise. Take your seat in the presence of the Lord. I need just one, one glass of, of the communion. Just one. Like this. This is the preparation that we have here as the communion. And he said, when we take it, we are taking his blood. Am I correct? Now, 
If I want to understand his blood, I need to understand the human blood. The human blood has many components. It has water, it has plasma. It has platelets. But I want to deal with two major components. The red blood cell and the white blood cells. The red blood corpuscles and the white blood corpuscles. The red blood cells transport oxygenated blood from the heart around the body. That is, it, oxygen is life. The one you breathe. The red blood cells is necessary for transporting life. Every department of the body must carry life. So, if you assume that his blood also carries divine red blood cells, this one now is not transporting human life, but divine life. Magadiga lagaya gadagayash. So as you, and that life is moving in the lungs, the arteries, the veins, the tendons, the nerves, the ligaments. And it's just flowing through your body. You see, the reason why we haven't seen results, we didn't take it with understanding. Because understanding is what makes it work. So, so, inside the communion, there is a life transportation going on divine life so whatever is contrary to the life of jehovah is not permitted survivor it is directly coming in confrontation with the life of the enemy let me drop red blood cells carry white blood cells the white blood cells are the soldiers of the body the white blood cells are the, they, are, they are responsible for the immune status of the body. They are just in search of virus, in search of bacteria. So is there any Ebola here? Ay, 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 but in this case, it is not just looking for physical virus and bacteria, but it's looking for witcheria. <laughs> Whatever is sent into your body by witches and wizards, by the occult. So you can see now that the blood carries both life and also carries a defense and immunity antibodies that are created to fight anything that is not of God so as you take this communion today the life of Jesus steps into your blood and as you take this communion today the divine white blood cells will look for any virus in your body every disease in your body every bacteria in your body and swallow them up alive shout yes ay, 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 ay. and then can you imagine taking it every day in the morning I don't know how many years now, every single day my wife serves the children, the family, 5 a.m., 6 a.m. You are on your way. Aru, Aru will arrive and bounce back to sender. I speak to somebody. That fear of death dies today. That fear of death dies today. Take your seat in the presence of the Lord. But hear me right now. Question is, is there any symbolism or any type of this in the Old Testament? Plenty of it, but I'll give one for this service. We had the Passover, the Passover meal in the Old Testament in Exodus chapter 12 and in verse 11 to 13. Exodus 12, he said, Thus shall ye eat it with your loins guarded. 
your shoes on your feet and your staff in your hand. And you shall eat it in haste. It is the Lord's Passover. That was the type of the communion in the Old Testament. The first, the first uh, typology of it. He said, for I will pass through the land of Egypt this night. And I will smite all the firstborn in the land of Egypt. Both man and beast. And against all the gods of Egypt, I will execute judgment. I am the Lord. Verse 13. He said, and the blood shall be to you for a token upon the houses where you are. And when I see the blood, I will pass over you. And the plague, the Ebola shall not be upon you to destroy you. When I smite the land of Egypt, whether it is the Ebola or the herpes or the SARS. That is, the taking of their Passover was their instant deliverance from instant death. Do you understand what I'm talking about at all? Everybody was dying everywhere. But those who took the Passover were not permitted. The blood made the affliction to pass over. Somebody will say, but how does that concern us? It concerns us because in the New Testament, the Bible said in 1 Corinthians 5 verse 7 that Christ is our Passover. Put out therefore the old leaven that you may be a new lump as ye are unleavened. For even Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. So as we take his body and blood, we are participating in the same kind of Passover that they participated in, in the Old Testament. And as the blood of the Passover lamb made the plague to pass over, the blood of our new Passover lamb, Jesus Christ, will make every arrow of the devil to pass over in the name that is above every name. As you take the Passover tonight, that devil and his arrows will pass over. That amen can be better. That amen can be better. Shout the loudest amen. amen. Lift your right and say tonight. I take the Passover. Communion. And I announce to you. Witches and wizards. Passover. Occultists. Passover. Stray bullets. Passover. Organ disease. Passover. Viruses. Passover. Bacteria. Pass over. Take your seat in the presence of the Lord. And so, every time you wake up in the morning and you took the communion, or every time you came to church and you took the communion, pass over. Pass over. Not me you are looking for. Pass over. Pass over. Pass over. Pass over. A thousand may fall here. Ten thousand may fall there. It can never come near me. Christ, my Passover, has already been sacrificed. He died young so I can live long. I refuse to be destroyed. Take your seat in the presence of the Lord. What else does the communion symbolize for us? Please understand. That it is a divine inoculation. A divine vaccination. I'll say more about that maybe in the second service. But what else does the communion symbolize for us? 1 Corinthians chapter 11 verse 23 to 26. 1 Corinthians chapter 11 verse 23 to 26. It says, For I have received of the Lord that which I also delivered unto you. That the Lord Jesus the same night in which he was betrayed took bread. And when he had given thanks he broke it and said take it. This is my body which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. After the same manner also he took the cup. When he had sobbed saying, This cup is the new testament in my blood. This do ye as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you do show shut up. The Lord's death till he comes. Amplifier version. Verse 26 of amplifier version. Amplified version amplifies like an amplifier. Every time you eat this bread and drink this cup, 
you are representing and signifying and proclaiming the fact that he died. The fact of the Lord's death until he comes. This is the meaning. As you drink the blood, every witch, hear me, he died. You are, it's an, the communion is a communication. Ay, 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 ay. The communion is an announcement. That is the, the next thing you need to understand. It is an announcement. It is a communication to every man, woman, boy, girl, virus, bacteria, demon, devil, demoness that has any ear to hear. It's an announcement. Let me see the devil that said he did not die. And if he died, let me see the devil that can stop me from benefiting from that death. Do you understand what I'm saying? Maybe you didn't understand it very well. You are announcing to all. And one of the greatest nightmares of the devil is the death of Christ. Because that was his worst defeat. It, is in that, it was in dying that Jesus broke his back permanently. I am announcing his death to every Ebola virus. By this communion, I announce that he died. And what did he die for? Many things. But I'll mention only two. What did he die for? What are you announcing? First, you are announcing the destruction of disease as you take the communion. Because he died to destroy disease. Isaiah 53 verse 4 to 5. 53, surely he has borne our griefs and carried our sorrows. Yet, we did esteem him stricken, smitten of God and afflicted. He was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. How many stripes I'm healed? HIV, hear me. How many of you know actions speak louder than words? So every time you are taking communion, you are speaking. You are making a statement. All the diseases that kill people in my family, hear this. I take this communion to announce to you that he died to destroy you. I take this communion to announce to liver disease, breast cancer, announce to HIV, Ebola virus, my master died to destroy you. Look at your neighbor say, I'm about to make some announcement tonight. Look at somebody say, let every witch know, every wizard know, in case you come across them, that he died to heal me. To deliver me. So every time I take the communion, I am making the announcement afresh. Doesn't that help somebody? Does that not lift your faith? That even if you didn't say anything, the, the process of the communion, even if the devil did not know before, he's knowing now since I'm talking. And if you know and the devil knows, the battle is over. You know that taking the communion means destruction of death, of disease. And the devil knows that you are now aware that every time you are taking the communion, you are announcing to Ebola virus, go and boil in hell. What did he die to do again? Number two, now, I told you there are many things, but because of time, we are concentrating on just the reason why we are here tonight. He died to destroy death and give life. In the book of John, chapter 6, verse 51, where we read, he said, I am the living bread which came down from heaven. If any man eat of this bread, he shall live forever. And the bread that I will give is my flesh, which I will give for the life of the world. It died for me to live. So as you take the communion, you are saying premature death, find your level. 
Hear this announcement of the one who died to destroy you and give me life. Death before time. Find your level. Hebrews chapter 2 verse 13. Let me read it here. And I, even if I have to read it again in the second service. He's alive. Amen. He's alive. Jesus is alive forever. Hebrews 2 14. For as much then as the children are partakers of flesh and blood, he also himself took, likewise took part of the same. That through death, by dying, he might destroy him that has the power of death. That is the devil. And deliver all those who through fear of Ebola were, were all their lifetime subject to bondage. To deliver them from the fear of Ebola and the fear of bomb, and the fear of stray bullet, and the fear of everything to deliver them. So every time you are taking the communion, you are announcing afresh, death, he died to destroy you on my behalf. Somebody say, but that scripture, does it mean that nobody will die at all? No, it means that you, you are permitted to sleep. Somebody say sleep. That is how the people, the covenant people go. The Bible said, after David served his generation, Acts 13, 36, what did he do? He fell on asleep. There's a difference between those who are taken by death and those who slept. Those who are taken are those who, who went contrary to their choice. Bam! Cancer. Bam! Road traffic accident. God forbid. But when he says you shall live, it means by the time your, your tenure is over, you slept. Say, no sickness. Oh. In fact, the way he was talking yesterday, as if he knew. As if he knew. The way he was talking. He called everybody, he apologized to everybody. No pain, nothing. That was how Smithwigus was slept. He took the communion every single day. And somebody asked, are you healed? Say, no, what? And he took off. At the age of 86. That is not bad. And you don't sleep until it is night. You are not permitted to sleep in the daytime. In my understanding, the age of 70 is like 7 p.m. <laughs> hey! Stand up on your feet with a shout of victory. With a louder shout of victory. Look at three people say you are only permitted to sleep when it is night. No devil shall take you before your time. Are we together still? So, every time you took that communion, you are making an announcement. You are causing demons. And tonight, you are going to make big announcement. He died to destroy diseases around me. He died to destroy ancestral curses. He died to kill what is killing others. He died to make me fulfill my days. I take this communion as an announcement. Take your seat in the presence of the Lord. What do we take as, as the communion? You see, many times, some people, when, when I said uh, bring anything as a point of contact, some people, no. Some people are confused. What do we, how do we arrive at, as, at what is called the communion? Is there, is there a special bread? No, we, we serve you a special, a special bread. Right? But it must there be a special bread that constitutes the communion or a special wine. Well, the only wine you must, you must never take is 0 0.000001% alcohol. No matter the, the littleness of the percentage. 
But let me tell you how easy it is to have the communion. Matthew chapter 26, verse 26 to 28. This will help you very well. Help you and demystify. He said, as they were eating. They didn't even say we have a communion service. He didn't even say all of you come for communion. As they were eating. Jesus took bread. Out of what they were eating. What transformed it into the communion is the blessing. He blessed it. As they were. So. I could carry breakfast bread. And ripe dinner. And fertilize it. As they were eating, out of what they were eating, he took some, some out of it and they blessed it and said, this food now has become my body. Blessed it and break it and gave it what they just were eating now and to the disciples and said, take it, this is my body. What? Is it not... Um, what do they call that uh, shawarma bread? <laughs> Is it not bread that we are just eating? He said, no. By the fact of this pronouncement, the spiritual content has changed. By the fact of this announcement, the chemistry of the bread has changed. The other one we were eating before the blessing was to fulfill, satisfy your stomach. This one now is to inoculate your spirit. To inoculate. And then he took the cup. They were drinking out of the same cup there. He gave thanks and gave it to them and said, drink all of it. But this is my blood. What? Just now? Does it mean we're drinking blood before now? No. After the prayer, chemistry changed. Which is shared for many for the remission of sins. Can somebody say amen? amen. So we must not um, feel that, oh, okay. If by faith the blessing is invoked on the, on the, on the bread and on the wine, it, releases, it receives an impartation to transmit whatever the body carries and whatever the blood of Jesus carries. Is God speaking to someone here? Take your seat. Now the next question is, does do we take the communion only in, during services? Not necessarily. Acts chapter 2, verse 46. The Bible said they were breaking the bread both in the temple and from house to house. So it could be eating in the church and eating in the house with one accord in the temple and breaking bread from house to house. First Corinthians 11, verse 26 also said, Wherefore, whosoever 11 26. For as often as you eat this bread, so you can eat it as often as possible, as often as necessary, and drink this cup, you show the Lord's death till he comes. As often. If you want daily, weekly, wetness daily, or three times daily, if you are in the midst of some brutal confrontations of health, nothing stops you from taking one in the morning, one in the afternoon, one in the night. Like doctor's prescription. By faith. Communion TDS. Like they, you know, the doctors will have, they have, they have a way of writing so you don't understand are you following what I'm saying? Or oh, PRN, PRN, when necessary. Am I communicating? You, as, as frequently and as often as necessary. So after we took the general, we take the general one tonight. Before you sleep, just take one. See, no fly here, which is tonight. Somebody give the Lord a loud shout of praise. Now. How do you take this communion? Two ways. Number one, faith is the drawer of virtue. Faith. 
by faith, by faith. You draw virtue by faith. Faith is the drawer of virtue. Talking about eating um, in, in another context, the Bible said in Romans chapter 14 verse 23 uh, and this can also be applied to the communion. He said, and he that doubted is damned if he eat because he eateth not of faith. For whatsoever is not of faith is sin. The, the B part is actually my emphasis. Whatever we don't do out of faith is impotent. It lacks result. Virtue flows on the ground of faith. In the book of Mark chapter 5 and in verse 27 to verse 30 we saw the story of the woman with the issue of blood. When she heard of Jesus she came in the press behind and touched his garment. If I may touch but his clothes I shall be made whole. And straightway the fountain of her blood was dried up and she felt in her body that she was healed of that plague. Listen to me brothers and sisters around us. Jesus Christ carries, carries virtue everywhere he goes. He's just flowing. When Jesus says, somebody touch me, Peter said, but everybody is touching you. He said, no, there is a different touch I felt. It's called the touch of faith. It is faith that draws virtue. In the same manner, if this is his body and this is his blood, then virtue is inside. Power to heal. A woman testified on Sunday, the last communion we had in the, in the Dunamis home church, she had not seen her menses for one year. The moment the communion entered her mouth, bam! She asked the host, can I use your toilet please? She, did, she said she, did, she, she didn't leave the spot. She didn't reach home. It has not left her hand. Bam! Can I, can I make use of your toilet please? Fire, yeah, 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 yeah. The virtue instantly fired what the devil was holding back in her body out. It carries virtue. And the fate of this is all the things you have been hearing tonight, let it go through your mind while you are taking it. Let it come with, take it with a, a high level of understanding of what this cup carries. The very life, indestructible life of the master. The energy, divine antibodies, divine red blood cells and white blood cells. Let it flow through your mind and take it with belief. Like I told you, if occultic concussion can produce any demonic result for them, how much more the one that he handed over to us before he left? Take this. Tonight, as you take it by faith, you will see the results. Yeah. And the second condition is the condition of uprightness. Uprightness. He said, because many people do not take it from verse 26 again. 1 Corinthians 11, 26 to 30. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you do show the Lord's death till he come. He said, we are so Wherefore, whosoever shall eat this bread and drink this cup of the Lord unworthily, sinfully, shall be guilty of the body and blood of the Lord. He said, but let a man examine himself, and so let him eat of that bread and drink of that cup. And he said, for he that eateth and drinketh unworthily, eateth and drinketh damnation to himself. He's, he's condemning himself, not discerning the Lord's body. For this cause, many are weak and sickly among you. And many did what? They slept. They just took off. That will never be your portion. You are there smoking the same mouth you are using to put cigar. The same mouth putting communion. It's destruction you are looking for. The same mouth you are putting alcohol. The same mouth, mouth you want to put the communion. It's destruction. The same hand you are using to take bribe or give. is the same hand you are using to serve the communion. It's destruction. The same with immoral life. You see, so he said we should examine ourselves and then we can take this. Tonight, I welcome you to this divine vaccination, divine inoculation, and divine injection. And I tell you, the devil finds his level tonight. Stand on your feet with a shout of praise. Let that shout be louder. Take your seat. You know the reason why. The shout is too bankrupt.
compared with what you just heard tonight. How many of you see the Bible says he sent forth his word and healed them? How many of you already feel healing in your body? You already feel deliverance. Stand with a shout. Hey! Look at somebody say, I saw something tonight. I feel freedom in my spirit. I am no more afraid of any virus or of any devil. I receive total freedom. Lift your hands and give him the praise. Give him the praise. Give him the praise. That's the IGC Enugu there. They are jumping, jumping, jumping. Give him the praise. Give him the praise. Give him the praise. All around the world. Dunamis International Gospel Center. People are connected everywhere. Because it is our communion. Our inoculation. Escape. 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 From disaster. From danger. From destruction. Father, we give you the praise. Father, we give you the praise. Tonight, we will celebrate the communion. This is, this is one communion to celebrate. There are some communions you take like this. But there are some you dance like this. Do you understand? Because of, this, of the promises we have just received. Is this thing real? And I've been taking this thing for years and witches are still oppressing me? No more. Hey! Lift up your two hands and thank the Lord for the word, for the light, for the insight. Anyone here today in need of forgiveness, in need of mercy. You say, Pastor, I just heard the last thing you said. That somebody cannot take it unworthily. Not just because I don't want to die, but because I don't want to go to hell at the end of my life. Anywhere you are and you need Jesus in your life today. Say this prayer with me. Lord Jesus. Louder. Lord Jesus. I come before you today. Today I have decided to follow you Lord. No turning back. Today I go forward ever. Backward never. Deliver me Lord from the power of sin. Deliver me from the power. The bondage of iniquity. I receive that grace to serve you and, and live for you. In Jesus' name. Amen. All those who pray that prayer, can I see your hand lifted? God bless you, sister. See all the hands. Quickly, come forward. Carry your Bibles and bars. God, you are so, so good. good. Quickly, quickly, quickly. Those in the overflows that need to, that pray that oh, prayer Lord, of cleansing and surrender, so come good. forward. And those in all our churches across the nation, even those watching via the satellite or the television, let us know your decision tonight. Oh Lord, oh Lord, how great thou art. Blessed be, blessed be your name. Lift your hands up. Father, in the name that is above every name, Jesus Christ, the resurrected Lord. I ask that the hold of sin be broken off these lives. In the name of Jesus, receive the grace to live for God and receive the help of God. The power of sin be broken in Jesus' precious name. Stand up on your feet. Everybody stretch your hands towards this altar as I pray on this communion. Father, in the name that is above every name, Jesus Christ, the resurrected Lord, I pray and prophesy upon this communion. As you took that bread and blessed it, therefore Lord, and you say as your father sent me, sent you, you sent me, I release the same blessing upon this communion right now. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. I prophesy divine antibodies. I prophesy divine red blood cells, white blood cells, the very nature and the very life of Jesus, that indestructible life, I prophesy upon this communion. As you take it, your life is indestructible. Now, carry your communion materials up at the same time, please. Lift it up if you have your communion materials that I asked people to bring you. Lift it high up. I speak by prophecy.
Like bagaya dala ya taseke paros. El likenda babarana nini soa. El ferry tiseke bagaya talero satala. Everything that is wasting away people's lives, liver disease, kidney disease, HIV AIDS, breast cancer, cervical cancer, Ebola virus, SARS virus, witchcraft attack, ancestrally caused premature death, road traffic accident, armed robbery attacks, hired assassination, ritual killing, every form of terrorism by the reason of the blood and the body of Jesus, you are exempted. I prophesy a Passover. I prophesy Passover. I prophesy Passover in the name of Jesus. Every single day of your life as you take this communion or as frequently as you intend to take with you and your loved ones. I prophesy every calamity will pass over. Every affliction will pass over. Every infection in the air will pass over. And by the reason of this communion tonight, whatever is currently an infection in your body, currently a problem in your body, I prophesy this swallowed up now. I prophesy swallowed up right now. I prophesy swallowed up right now. In the name of Jesus. I prophesy upon you tireless energy. You will not be a, a victim of continuous breakdowns. Tireless strength and energy. Receive it now. In the name of Jesus. And as we take the communion tonight and as you continuously take it. Every time you take it, the kingdom of darkness will hear an announcement. Witches and wizards will hear an announcement. The powers of the occult will hear an announcement. They will hear that Jesus died for you of a truth. And that every reason why he died must be fulfilled in your life. The faith to believe. Receive an impartation of the spirit of faith to understand the full implication of what you are taking. The grace to live upright by the same blood of Jesus. Receive that grace in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. And I prophesy and I announce right now by the ingestion of this communion today, every fear of death dies right now uh -huh. and instant miracles instant testimonies before we live here in your body you will feel the move of god in jesus name give the lord a loud shout of amen